Adil, great to catch up with you after a while, and that too after you've created this new big record that all of us want to hear about. So tell me first and foremost, how does it feel to actually have run seven marathons across seven continents? So thank you, sir, for first giving me this opportunity to have this conversation with you. Uh, it obviously feels great. It was uh, something that I didn't really plan maybe more than about last two years or so. I actually started running just about 10 years back, but the bulk of my running has happened only in the last four, three, four years. And uh, when I'd finished my World Six Majors, I wanted to find a new uh, quest, and this was the next one, to run the continent, every, a marathon in every continent. And I, uh, in this month of January, I managed to run the last two continents that were left, which was uh, Antarctica and South America, and that's how I finished my seven continents. That's fantastic. So why don't you give me a sense of what was exciting about Antarctica, what's great about the white you know, kind of continent, what did you see there, what did you do there, how did you even live? Okay, so sir, Antarctica is not like any city or country. You know, there are no buildings, there are no roads, the, air, the, the airfield was just a simple strip of mud, the plane just landed and we just got out. There's no immigration, there's no customs, there's no airport. You just walk out of the plane and you walk. And each country has, uh, whoever is representing in Antarctica has got some bases. A base means nothing but some prefabricated huts and, uh, you know, some log, log, not log, but those tin shed kind of huts. And uh, people uh, move there in rotation. So, you know, uh, and when we landed there, uh, it was cold. I had spent 60 hours reaching uh, South America. And then once I was in Chile, I fell sick, you know, my, I had fever, cold and all that. So when I landed in Antarctica, I was, you know, pretty, pretty ill. And uh, we landed and then we were told to walk for about a kilometer to the nearest bathroom. Because, the, you know, the, the basic rule about Antarctica is that you cannot leave anything in Antarctica that doesn't belong to Antarctica. They want to keep it environmentally, uh, you know, absolutely uh, fragile. They don't want anything from any other part of the world to come there and be there, which is not part of it. So, to, to the extent that your poop has to be taken back with you also, you can't leave it behind in Antarctica. You know, we were told don't wander anywhere. It's, it was all barren. Uh, either it was black rock or it was ice. And the, the beautiful part of Antarctica was the icebergs and the penguins. You know, there were a whole lot of penguins and they were very friendly. They would just walk next to you. You know, they wouldn't feel uh, worried or scared of human beings as such. So, so that was in a way, what is Antarctica? What actually motivates you to run these kind of marathons? You know, what keeps you ticking? Well, running is health. You know, I, I, I want to stay healthy till my last, you know, last day in this world. I don't want to, you know, become sick in my old age and, you know, suffer like so many, you know, relatives I've seen, my family, etc. So I want to be healthy throughout. And when I, actually my wife ran the first run in our family. And we all followed her. And after that, uh, you know, running, you, you're free, sir. When you run, no, you, you get up in the morning and you get out in the open and it's, you know, it can be a hot day or a cold day or a windy day or whatever. You know, you just feel nice. You know, you go out for a run or you go out for a cycle ride and you feel fresh, you feel one with nature. A lot of runs happen before the sun rises. So, you know, you watch beautiful sunrises as you're running in the morning. And then when I started running places across the world, it became a way to see the world. And I coined a word called runacation. It means a run and a vacation, you know. So be, be, between me and my wife, we went to, you know, so many parts of the world. And we would have never done that if it wasn't for, uh, for marathons and for running. That's amazing. And I hope you know that every time you run, there are thousands and thousands of WNS colleagues of yours who are cheering you on and who are really delighted with, you know, the success that you're having and creating in the, uh, in the world of running. Uh, do you wear a WNS t-shirt whenever you run? 95% of the times. That's 5% is because there have been times in the morning when I've gotten up and somehow I haven't been able to find it in the hurry to you know, go for a run. Otherwise, 95% of the times, always I wear my WNS shirt. I mean, the, the, the sleeveless t-shirt that I have. In Antarctica, I wore it. I wore it in the, in the South America run. So, you know, my WNS t-shirt goes, it's, it's always in my bag when I, when I go for a run. And uh, to your point, sir, yes, uh, I'm so happy that, you know, so many people in the company have, you know, begun running. 
and uh, uh, you know last year we had over 8000 people who did some sporting activity through our WNS sports initiative that we that we run under your guidance and i think uh, i would expect that they then at least 50% of the people run so we, the goal is to at least hit 20000 people you know in the next maybe year or two to ensure that you know so many so many others can also be uh, you know can enjoy the joy of uh, running or any other physical sport that they'd like so tell us a little bit about diet and you know discipline you know as you make this kind of uh, uh, part of your life so as a triathlete there are actually four disciplines there is swimming cycling and running and the fourth discipline is diet right if you if you can't eat healthy and if you can't uh, be disciplined about diet it's very difficult to you know to manage uh, your uh, training as well as your actual events I try my best to avoid eating, uh, you know, uh, uh, say oily food or fast food and stuff like that. I also don't believe in this theory of having a big hearty breakfast, you know. I am somewhat a fan of intermittent fasting. So if my last meal would be say about 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock at night. And then my next meal may be say 2 o'clock or 1 o'clock in the afternoon. So I would have a 15, 16 hour gap, you know, without food. And I haven't felt weaker or, you know, in any way lesser. And there's a thumb rule. For every extra kilo that you carry in your body as body weight, you'll be four minutes slower in a full marathon. It's, it's a thumb rule. So, you know, so if I'm, let's assume if somebody's 10 kilos overweight, means it can take 40 minutes more to finish. So, so to, to, to stay healthy, to stay, that's why you'll never see a, a, a bodybuilder marathon. You'll see very lean people, you know, thin people, all endurance athletes will be, you know, very lean uh, human beings. So what's next, Adil? This year I have two events lined up, which are two major events. One is my Ironman in Sweden, which is in August. And then a friend of mine and me are together going in, uh, in September to swim the English Channel. So our plan is to swim from England to France, that is Dover to Calais. We've already, you know, paid our entry and we've, you know, uh, we've found a pilot. We need a boat because as per the English Channel Swim Association rules, you need to have a pilot boat because it's a very, it's one of the busiest sea routes in the world. So you just can't go swimming across the ocean because, you know, you could get killed by some, some ship coming over you and stuff like that. So all that has to be, you know, regularly planned. So that's my two, two, two main events for the year and hopefully the English Channel one is the one which I'm, you know, a little nervous about. Iron Man to ho jayega, but the English Channel one is somewhere which I'm, you know, uh, you know, is, is, is going to be a little tough for me. Because you're going to swim in temperatures which would be, uh, could even be single digits or maybe 12 to 14 degrees. And as per the English Channel swim rules, you can't wear a wetsuit, you can't wear anything beyond the briefs that you have to, you know, swim in. Well, that's great. You know, it's been wonderful interacting with you. I must say that all of us at WNS are very proud of you. We are all very motivated to follow in your footsteps. Uh, and we're looking forward to hearing more and more about some of your success stories. So all the very best and let's shake your other hand. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much.